Dun, dun. Ooh, sound like it's raining again. Hey, oh, oh. hey Instagram, it's me, T. From the Patterson Second Trench. Look, I I didn't post yesterday. Well, I do have an excuse, even though you know excuses are worthless, you know. But let me just tell you what happened, right? I'm in good weather right now. It's been raining for the last four days. It's supposed to rain at least through to tomorrow. It, it, it's been like, when I say raining, I mean a dawn onslaught. And when it does that, it messes up the internet, a bunch of things. So yesterday, I'm waiting for it to come back. Da, 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 it, was a, it was a mess. So I couldn't record yesterday. Yesterday was the me day, too. I look forward to me day. No, I actually don't look forward. I look forward to audio drama days, which is on Thursdays. Uh, today is Tuesday, where I did deal with uh, U.S. affairs. And tomorrow, Wednesday, I deal with... Uh, what do you call that? The world affairs. Thursday is the audio drama. And I like this. And then uh, Friday is uh, like a week wrap up or something. That I still haven't named that yet. Uh, Saturday is uh, whatever comes into my head. And uh, Sunday is uh, like I usually do it. Uh, I'm, I'm reading something and then I, I riff off whatever I've been reading or something like that, you know. And then Monday's the meet day, which I missed yesterday. So I'm going to actually, I'm going to combine. I got an idea. I think it happened on, was it a Sunday? I think it was Sunday. I talked about uh, the lineage of, uh, of Barack Obama and, and a little bit of lineage of uh, uh, the Harris woman, right? Uh, but and I, I don't think I talked about my lineage. So today I'm going to combine those two lineages and my lineage and explain something to you about stuff, okay? Here we go. As you know, I'm sorry, let me go back. There used to be this thing where you see a, a, a middle-aged guy and he's wearing this wide tie. And this was like in, the, say, the 80s or, the, or, the, or, the, or, the, or even the 90s. And, but, but then there was slimmer ties, whatever, but he was wearing his wide ties, like 1950s tie. And you say, what's wrong with that cat? You know, it would be like a, a thing. You know, everything else in him was perfect, but it's that there. But what, what you realize, what that symbolized is that someplace in his life, in his, 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 as, he was, as that person was growing up, uh, that's, that, that was the best time of his life. You know what I mean? And so that sort of symbolized the best time in, the, in his life. So what I'm trying to say is that I used to ask this, I used to, I asked this question later. Like What's your through line? What's your through line? Through line meaning, where, 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 if you can identify way back uh, the thing that, that still motivates you today or, 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 or is, is a constant that runs through, uh, runs through your existence right now, then what would that be? For instance, my through line when I think about it is service. I said, what? S service. Like serving, serving others, like being unselfish. No, that's not. I can be selfish, of course. Especially when I eat, I don't like nobody. Anyway, the point is, uh, 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 like, about six years after I was born, yeah, because it's, it's my mother. Anyway, my mother was paralyzed. She had seven children. No, uh, um, uh, she had seven children, uh, six different fathers. With you know, well, there's twins in there, so it's like, figure that. Uh, but what what stopped her? What slowed her down? What stopped her? Slow down? What stopped her? Is she caught? I think that's called consumption, it's called polio, right? So my earliest, well, my, actually my earliest memory of my mother was like on oh, no, this rooftop with 531 St. Paul's where I was born, right? Uh, well, you know, Mar Haven, uh, Mar Haven, the, uh, the, uh, 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 the Morrisina section of, I was born in Morrisina Hospital, let's put it that way, in the Bronx. Let's call it Central Bronx. Uh, uh, well, don't worry, the point is, uh, and I, I just remember she's tall, you know, I just remember she was tall. I was probably like, I'm somewhere between one and three years old, so she's tall, right? And um, anyway, from, from the age of three to about five and a half, because uh, my, my, my mother became whatever she became, and, uh, and we were all, all the children were, were all uh, thrown into like foster care, different foster homes. So I was in the system. I'm, I'm technically 5150 before 5150 became a thing. I'm, anyway, don't matter, don't worry about that point. Uh, shout out to 5150, love Corey Holcomb and gang. Look, so what, uh, so I'm informed by that time from about, say, uh, say three, three, three years old to about five and a half of uh, being in this system. I mean, one of the earliest members I have, memories I have, is like being behind this, like, it's like a cage and people would come by and look, you know, one guy, one or whatever, it's like very strange. But I, re I clearly remember that. And then there's other things happening. Anyway, Anyway, we got out of the situation. My grandmother put us together. We, we ended up in the Mount Haven section of the Bronx, naming the Patterson Projects. And from then on, life was pretty rosy. <laughs> it's like very interesting. I mean, uh, uh, here I am in the projects, but, you know, our, our build out, 
In the, in, in the Patterson Project, you have 13-story buildings and six-story buildings. But our building, we were like one of the roughest, I mean, nobody messed with our building. I don't know why. I guess because the, the, the kind of people we had in our building, it's only a six-story building, nobody messed with our building. Nobody. We were all tough. I mean, we had a tough building. If I grew up in a tough building, and we had all kinds of people. Next door neighbors were white. Next to them were, 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 were Puerto Rican. Or were they Dominican? Whatever, because Dominicans sort of slipped in under the Puerto Rican. Nobody knew. Back then, everybody was Spanish. You know what I mean? So you, it was a big, not a confusion, but you know, the Dominicans weren't saying they were Dominicans, and the Puerto Ricans would say they were Puerto Ricans, but Dominicans, we just thought everybody was Spanish, right? Upstairs, we had, we had, we had, Blind, crippled, and crazies all it out at our uh, 340 Morris Avenue. Okay. So, so my earliest memory is, 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 the, is the foster care system. Well, well, foster care system, uh, passion projects. That's how I grew up. Then about nine years old, right, I joined the cadet corps, following my brother, following my brother around all of them. But he left, but I stayed, right? So I'm informed, and, oh, I'm sorry, in that early time, we would go visit my mother, and, and, and it was called Welfare Island at the time. But the Goldwater Memorial Hospital no longer exists. It's like a big development there. You know, the whole island, is whatever it's called. Roosevelt Island is called now, yeah. But um, my earliest thing is like I would, uh, it was weird because my brother was older, but my, my twin sisters, they were, they were uh, had mental, they were retarded. We call them retarded at the time because that's what they were. But other than there's my younger brother, then my younger sister. It's like a five-year distance between my younger sister and me. And then my brother, like, so I was the only one that's sort of mobile and I guess mobile enough, whatever. So I would like, scratch the dandruff out my mother's hair. I would do all kinds of put uh, when she was out of the iron lung, find a guy out of the an iron lung. She had those, those those braces that went from your hips on down, and adjusting the braces in her wheelchair. You know, so she could walk a little bit with that. Then, anyway, the point is, right, that's my earliest memory is service. And then in the cadet corps, we learned service. That's what we were built. It was like, uh, think of Motown. What did Motown do? All they did was take a bunch of project kids and, 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 and dance them up and, and etiquette them up and, and, and diction them up so that they could be presented in front of Queen. <laughs> That's the whole thing about Motown. So you, you, you took the ghetto. Now you didn't take, you, you took the circumstance of the ghetto and put them in another circumstance but taught them how to deal in the other circumstances. That's what the Cadet Corps was. I'm just not going to get into it. New York, New York City Mission Society Cadet Corps. In that period too, that shaved me a lot because uh, I could use my, I had this natural service thing. So in a cadet corps, you would, you would te teach other people behind you what to do. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, you know as, you, as you grew up to the ranks, as you grew up, you know, you teach it other people behind you, right? At the same time, so we around here about, it's, it's about 15, uh, uh, plus the fraternity, the, the, the Pentecostal Military Fraternity. That also is like service, let's call it the elite, the elite of the cadet corps. Let's put it that way. Um, of course, yes, officer training, you know, officer of the year, or second place officer, all, all bunch, of, bunch of stuff. So the Cadet was a full rounded thing. You know, I did fencing when I was young, ice skating, winter camp, summer camp. It was like, poof. And then plus on the summers, we had we had the floating hospital. We took the bus down to the hospital. I had an idyllic <laughs> childhood in a weird sort of way. You know, it's ghetto, but it's, you know, it's, it's, we're all together. At the same time, at the same time, this was happening because it was, I was growing up, it was time for me to join a gang, but there was no more gangs because they let drugs come into the neighborhood. And basically what that meant was that the gangs got involved in drugs and so they couldn't organize against the system because that was what they were afraid because we were listening to, to Malcolm and James Baldwin and, and Rain Hansberry. We were listening to people like that up north. I don't know who was listening down south. We wasn't, we wasn't into that, right? And so... And, and, and so they were afraid of that. So they let the drugs come into mainly the South Bronx and also Lower East Side because they were like hubs. I, I won't explain that to you right now. It's, it's well documented uh, in, in books and stuff like that. Okay. So here I am. Uh, I, I, for some reason, for a number of reasons, plus I guess I read a lot. Let's just put it that way. So I knew a lot of stuff already. And then there was a lot of uh, discussion going on, the politics and stuff like that. So somehow in that time period, instead of going to drugs or anything like that, you know, because I was in the cadet corps and service and stuff like that, and and then we had people like you know John Henry Clark coming through the cadet corps. You know, the teacher he taught all over Harlem. It doesn't matter. You know, cadet corps in Harlem, but he taught all over Bronx, everywhere. So anyway, I sort of slipped through. Well, I didn't deal with the drug thing, and I and I got involved with politics more, and of course service in the cadet corps because you know you're an example for young young people behind you, so you're not going to go do something. 
you got the uniform on, you're not going to do something stupid. You know what I mean? Embarrass the cadet corps uniform and stuff like that. Okay. So uh, after, you know, then, then I got involved at, at, at Negro Ensemble Company. I was a fraternity with Negro Ensemble Company. Then I got, then I went into the, to the U.S. Air Force. Got out of there, da, da, da. But all my life and growing up, up since then, and, oh, I should say this. Uh, uh, when I got out of the Air Force, I went to Livingston College, which, think, I'm going to say it this way. You're not going to understand what I'm saying. Well, it's Rutgers, Rutgers University had all these colleges. These colleges came back like seven or whatever. In New Brunswick, had five of them, stuff like that. And one of them was Livingston College. Livingston College was like the experimental college. And that's where they had, what they did, but they even went to, to the pool halls in Newark and, and, and recruited students, you know what I mean? She was, you know, the mean age for the college was about 25 years old, so it was a little, little, little bit older, right? A lot of Vietnam people, uh, veterans and stuff like that, you know, I came out of the service like, like, like that. And so, but what's, what was interesting about uh, that thing, you have to look at Livingston College, it was really amazing. It was like an HBCU dumped into the middle of an Ivy League college. And that's the only way an HBCU can really exist. And so it was really amazing. I won't get into it right now. Livingston is a whole other story. I'm sorry it won't be told. Uh, I don't know how you can tell it because most of, a lot of people have gone and some people don't even want to talk about it. I don't know. It's like going into a war. They don't want to talk about it no more. And it's been dismantled. It was just being dismantled when I was there. We, in fact, we held a funeral for it. And we won't get into that either. Then I got out of that and I, went to, I actually went to graduate school for, for playwriting at, at school in that, in that area, in that New Brunswick area. Uh, when I got it, it was a school of performance, something like that. They changed it to the Mason Grove School of Arts. Anyway, the, the point is over there was by Douglas Campus, across the Douglas Campus, which is a nice cancer campus to be adjacent to if you're a young man. Best, back to the point, all girls college. That's the point. So, um, <clears throat> so, so, so I have all those experiences. Then when I got out, of, grad, of graduate school because I didn't take the degree, won't get into it right now, and and I, I skipped over the whole thing of, of having my own radio program and the thing, and before I got into it, I was poet and resident for a radio station down in, in Princeton, all, all, that, all that stuff happened. So all that stuff has been in, informing me, but it's interesting, like each each different thing was more in, was intense, and, I, and I'm a type of person, I go intense into something. So if I'm poet and resident for a radio station, I'm poet and resident for a radio program, I said. I'm, that's what I'm doing. If I'm doing a radio program, that's what I'm doing. If I'm in theater, that's what I'm doing. You know, it's, it's, that's, it's, I'm, I'm not extreme. I'm, okay. So I get out of that, and, and, and uh, after, after, well, after I quit graduate school, after like two and a half years, whatever it is, I went back to New York when things had changed. So I ended up, I'm just going to go quickly, I ended up at WBI Radio, which is a whole other experience. So I was there for like 19... 82 to officially to, nine, to 1996 uh, when I started traveling, you know, but I still, I, I still have a position at, at, at WBI, but and it's going to be more clear, I guess, in about a year if I get going down here in, in uh, Eastern Cape where I want to get going. Okay, and I give you all that to say, all those things shaped me. It, it, it wasn't in some job for 20 years or 30 years. That's all I can talk about is that job or what that job is doing. I wasn't a career diplomat doing what, and that's the only thing I can talk about. I can talk about a vast array of things. I sort of keep it to, you know, audio, uh, an audio drama expresses everything I've been through. But the point really is that, so if you look at me, you won't actually know what it is because I had so many intensive experiences like that. If I'm studying, I'm studying. You know what I mean? If I'm, if I'm, if I'm in the, if I'm in the Air Force, I'm I'm going all the way through that. You know, I can't. I'm just I just totally immerse myself in what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm saying that proximity is everything, right? Now, let me go to. Uh, shall we start with Barack? Yeah, Barack. Uh, he didn't have no black experience. You know, when he he didn't go no no cadet corps enough like that. He had basketball in Hawaii. Fine. Uh, he he he's he's raised by a. a uh, 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 grand grandparents who basically are, are settler colonizers because they came from where was in middle of America and went to Hawaii to to you know do a land grab I guess or do what you know for 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 greener pastures so he grew up in that kind of situation and then at some particular point he, his his mother who's a, a anthropologist uh, she goes to Indonesia 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 and and hooks up with this uh, for this political dude. And who's who's up in the government? So and who, by all accounts, is a CIA asset. And she's uh, anthropologist. For me, anthropology just back back then it just means that you you you're an, you you can be an asset for uh, the, 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 the well the CIA spy machines, right? 
So he goes to that situation. So he comes from settler colonizers, right? And uh, and spies, <laughs> government people, right? He don't come from the what we call the black tradition or, 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 or black legacy, right? Or and and. and an American African leg legacy. He doesn't come from that, you know. Whereas, uh, I, I do like, I, I know ADOS, but I, 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 I do like Foundation of Black Americans. That, uh, as Tariq says, Tariq, Tariq says, it, um, it cuts through a lot of stuff. It, it's, it's specific. I like specific things because I, oh, my undergrad degree is in English. So I'm an English, you know, English literature, like that. So I like specific things, which is why, uh, now, this is like a, a, a Tuesday, so we're gonna do the, the campaign thing. This is why uh, I, I'm not. I'm not. I won't be voting. I, I won't even be absent, absentee voting. This whole thing, thing that happened anyway. I won't be voting. So I do rely on you to vote for me. Those people who don't want to vote, those people who want to s sit down and not go. Please, if you're gonna do it, can you vote for me? When I say vote for me, I mean literally go and, and cast like I would cast. Here's how I would cast. Right? Remember, I'm a reparations guy. So I, my, so you would vote for it when I say me. I want you to write in where you can. Uh, you write in uh, lineage reparations. That's my name, lineage reparations. You write that someplace on on the ballot that you can write in because when you in the states you can write in, right? Uh, that's the, for those people who want to who are going to vote for for your your red or your blue. You could do that like that. I, you, in fact, if I was there, I would uh, somewhere. Or I say somewhere on the ballot. You know, you have your, your presidential choices, I guess, is uh, the, the ones that's on every, well, whoever they are. You know what I mean? It's like the, the, the Red Party, the Blue Party, the Green Party, the Independence, uh, you know, whatever, Cornell Westers Party as well. So, uh, and then you have other things like your senators and your, and your, uh, 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 and your Congress people. So people, if you know your congressman is going to be elected, then you can write in for me, just write in. Lineage reparation. I just wanted some place on the ballot. This is like a, because ballot voting is not for me. It's like, not, not bowling is really polling, and I won't get into it right now. Uh, as we get in a couple of weeks, I'll really go deep into this on a Tuesday. Let, let me go back. But what I would do, I've uh, been listening now, we get close, I'm listening to everybody. I would actually vote for the Green Party. A couple of reasons. One, they, they uh, uh, Butch Ware, staunchly, well, he know he knows about West Africa, but he's, he's staunchly uh, uh, reparations, right? Uh, Jill Stein, she's trying to learn what reparations is, but she's anti-war. See, so I'm, I'm into both those things, anti-war and reparations. So I would vote for the Green Party, but then I would write in someplace, either in the, the Congress or the, if, if, if I have a senator, I would write in lineage reparations. Okay, that's how I would do it, right? Now let's go to, uh, now let's go, we did Barack Obama, I did my little campaign. Now let me go to Kamala Harris. Here's the problem with Kamala Harris. You all who you surround yourself with. Somebody said, somebody said that she was, uh, somebody called, I think it was Lord Jamal, or somebody, in reference to her, they called her, uh, did I say the modern way, the B word, right? Now, when I learned about the B word, <laughs> uh, who is it? Uh, 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 Booker T. Coleman, who is now, you know, uh, the, you, know you know who I'm talking about. What well, the brother says, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know uh, 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 a bitch is a female dog in heat. Oh, female dog in heat. So I used to say to people, say, if I wanted to mess with somebody, I said, I mean, come on, now stop being a female dog in heat. See, because now that way you don't use, use the thing. But if you look at what's, when we first meet Kamala Harris, that we know her, what is she? She's the side chick for downtown Willie Brown. In other words, she's a female dog in heat. So if the, if, if the, if the moniker, you know, fits you, you got to wear it. And since then, she she just used her looks, her femaleness to get ahead, and so I don't trust somebody like that. Plus, as 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 Joe Judge Joe, Joe, Joe Brown would say, uh, 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 a career uh, prosecutor, you're gonna put a prosecutor in, in charge of your, uh, I don't know. So anyway, so uh, so I couldn't do that. So so think of this as me just talking about the states for a second, and also my campaign. Of, please write in. On your on your ballot someplace when you go even on like, do they do with the, when you're mailing ballots do they give you the write-in choices well, when you go to I always do regular ballots I never do this other stuff so if you, on, your, on, your, on your when you go to the voting booth just write in someplace on the ballot after you've made your choices write in uh, lineage reparations lineage reparations I like to be specific like I said like uh, and remember I just want you just 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 to remember this 
if you do plan not, if you want a couch, it's gonna sit in your couch. Remember, that's good. But I'm talking strategy now. If you if you're gonna do that, you might as well just go to the ballot and just write in and, you, and you, since you don't want to deal with the president, just write in lineage reparations. Especially your people, a lot of people sitting on the couch are part of, of, of groups that say that you know, I'm I'm against the states, I'm against this, and I'm against that, and I don't agree with anything. Well, we're right in. What, are you for reparations? Then write in lineage reparations on your ballot. Do not sit home. Okay, I can't tell you what to do. Do 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 what you want to do. But let me talk to my the, those other uh, other the you know, the Pan Africanists, the really uh, 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 black nationalists. You know, blah 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 blah. Hey, if you get reparations, right? When we get reparations. Then you have you have some reserves to go and make business all over Africa and, and since Africa a lot of places in Africa will be part of BRICS and all and, and India and and, and, whatever, and Brazil and, and, and Cuba and whatever you you'll be part of BRICS and therefore you have money to hang out and to start businesses stuff from someplace else so you want to get your reparations so you'll be viable in the world in the scheme of things right and I'm not talking about everybody of course you know you got just then I'm talking about the people who uh, escaped drugs, <laughs> escaped prison, escaped all the stuff. So, or those people that didn't escape those things, but now you want to uh, uh, bring yourself to, 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 to get yourself get yourself together. You can get together if you get you if, if if you make sure they give you our reparations. So there you are. Then these reparations, write it in. Talk to you all later.